Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a video about tin and the special thing about tin is it's a metal that has a surprisingly low melting point for metals and it's pretty safe and if I start dropping it, I can show you that if you have a frying pan and uh, oven or stove right here the stove can reach about 300 degrees Celsius, 600 Fahrenheit-ish and that's actually enough to melt tin don't do those numbers for exact but it works you guys can see here are the same tin piece of metal on a heated pan if i just drop it through and just zoom in a bit you can see that it's slowly liquefying with a pool of metal now for a normal person it looks pretty weird because metal is like the last thing you'd see for liquid but compared to a person like me who does a lot of science experiments good thing about tin is that it melts on your stove so you don't have to build a proper furnace and it's low easy to melt at a pan melting point is if you just take some dumb molds like even just aluminum foil aluminum won't melt on a pan there is a much higher melting temperature compared to tin so you can literally make a dumb aluminum mold like this and you'll get literally a liquid metal cast and for a normal person just to make a liquid metal cast out of dumb stuff you buy on the internet in a pan it's pretty revolutionary compared to just having uh, try to build a proper furnace and for my channel i will build a proper furnace like a grand thompson one but uh, that's later in the future for now just a stove and some tin does uh, one stupid tangent in the middle one thing about tin is uh, low melting point also pretty fragile so if you have these tin bars right here you can just easily bend it open and it's no it's still weak it's like hard rubber or something it's still metal so technically I can bend metal with my bare hands. It's just a weird flex for there. And um, this thing called tin cry. And if you bend tin, the crystal inside it will start chattering and they make a noise. It's called the tin cry. And if I put the tin really close, I think you can hear it. It's a pretty cool noise when you're just bending it up, folding it up. But string all of that, melt the tin, put it in the mold. Tin is all melted and done, full on liquid. Now I just turn off the gas stove, get my camera set up, and um, let's put it inside our mold. Let's see how this does. It is quite heavy. I'm sure this is about a kilogram and a half of tin, just in like what 100 millimeters, uh, milliliters. It's a lot actually. And it has dropped. It's filling it in. Hopefully there's no leaks. And we're done. It's a good pour. I won't take you too close, so I'll just zoom. See the fresh metal right there. Just melting through. If I just shake the pan a bit. Still liquid, but looks like glass to be honest. Probably can see some reflection in there. But you know, just let it cool for a bit and I'll show you the mold. Yeah. While our tin is cooling, I just want to show you guys this tin structure I made before. Now, this looks a lot better, modern artish compared to the previous, this mess of a tin aluminum thing, but that's just a proof concept. Now, the way I did this was basically melted a bunch of tin on a pan and poured it into a bowl of water. Now, Tin usually you would kind of just turn to dust, but if you have a large amount of tin, it doesn't turn to dust. It actually makes these globules. That's what I call it a glob globulate. The structure. It looks kind of cool to be honest. It's like a city or something. Now, of course, a few wrong, a few things about this. You probably end up hurting yourself. You go too near it. It's pretty sharp. Things fall off. But you know, it's a pretty cool like mantle structure. If somehow you can not drop it or make people touch it because 
somebody went like this and dropped on the foot that would probably puncture the living hull out of it but this globulate thing aside i think our structure is almost so ready we have our mold all cooled down now you can either wait like half an hour for it to fully cool down naturally and the good thing about that might be you might get less of aluminum stuck to your final mold or you can just wait like five minutes for it to solidify still be hot and then just blast with cold water which is exactly what i did that's why it's dripping wet but you know i just don't want to show how amazing it can look but more proof concept so just pulling it apart now and yeah tin oxides ignoring this weird part to form pretty nice goldish color okay now that's one problem about water cooling aluminum sticks to it a lot and i mean that looks a lot like gold to be honest i'll just focus on that that looks strangely like gold and this feels like it'd be foily because of the aluminum foil pattern but strongly this probably weighs a kilo it's not very big and that is hard i mean if you draw a play button in that that looks like a gold play button much uglier but you know gold play button nonetheless if i just strip away this aluminum large part you kind of see uh, what i mean this tin structure was made just from a stove and special metal that melts on a stove and a lower temperature and basically what i mean is the thing you think about tin is it's just easy to cast that's how to sum up this video i just want to show you cool tin stuff i made especially the globulate thing so yeah go burn some tin in your house i mean don't burn it melt some tin in your house and cool molds for all day if you like a giant pan turns to metal pancake